Welcome happy, back. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday here at the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. Ooh, ooh. Oh my gosh. Why do I feel like I haven't been on a live stream in a minute? I have. You have. I have. Oh, because <laughs> oh, we skipped yesterday. Right. Yes. We Y'all, welcome back to the channel. I see that we have quite a few new friends. Yeah. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We are going to be your cricket bestie so just mm -hmm. I'm excited to meet you and get to know you please tell me about yourself in the comments if you're new around here even if you're watching the replay we honor you so much just for being here we love teaching people how to be the best crafter possible yeah and our team has been working so hard for you mm -hmm. if you're a new subscriber old subscriber we filmed videos all day yesterday. Yes, we shot a lot of videos. We shot like 12 or 13. More than our normal day. Yeah. Normal days here has have usually been like seven or eight. Yes. But like yesterday we were like so on fire. And finished early. And finished, yeah, a little early. Tanner had some uh, leisurely activities after, after the shoot <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. If you guys didn't know, our videographer who you can tell if we film a video like in house, it looks like a live stream setup. Mm -hmm. But if we use our videographer, who is Dylan, he films like the ones we go to the store and like yes. all those. He's one of my best friends. And I was telling him I've never shot a gun. <laughs> and he was like, Tanner, we've, we've got to go shooting after this. I was like, okay. I he's got... like good old boy. Yes. I, he's very, I told him he's like so redneck, but like <laughs> didn't know how to put his car in four wheel drive. Like he's yeah. fake redneck, if you know what I'm saying. He's like, yeah, I am. That's um, hilarious. But anyway. So it's so good. So I'm so, so excited to see all of you here. Yes. This project is gonna be so easy, mm -hmm. so simple. It um, is. And we have a lot of stuff coming up at Makers Gonna Learn. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you like this fourth quarter, like October, November, December, it's gonna be very full. And we're gonna make sure September is nice and busy too. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. you have a lot of opportunities to hang out with us. I have a brand new workshop that tickets will be opening up for later this week. Ooh. It is very special. Very new. Very new. Mm -hmm. And it's like on the cusp of taking everything that's been going on like this whole year. Mm -hmm. but like there's so much uncertainty in a Absolutely. whole different way than COVID, like in a whole new way. So I really want to help people that want to sell this year master it. So there'll be more to come on that. Stay tuned. Um, it's going to be good. It's next Saturday. So oh my gosh. you get to be there live if you get a ticket. So you'll learn more about that. Um, and I we're super, it. super excited for everything going on. Yeah. If you're new here, we have our dollar deal that is only a dollar and you can join Makers Gonna Learn. Seven days free mm -hmm. for a dollar. So seven days, you get 20 download credits. That's a lot. Then you'll be upgraded to a monthly membership mm -hmm. where you get unlimited downloads. Yes, Alicia, to keep forever. For someone here that's like not a member, that's brand new, what would you tell them is your favorite part of the website? Um, ooh, well, other than like the wide selection, because we have like oh, what, 15,000 15, files yeah. and thousands of fonts. Um, I love our font preview ooh. and I love our dashboard. Yes. Our dashboard is like the hub for everything. So you can find master classes, which are exclusive to members. Yes. You can find your new fonts, your files, everything you need is in one spot. Yeah. Um, which is really nice because you can just like, you're like, if you're like, I don't know where to go, just go to your dashboard. Just start Everything's there, there for mm -hmm. you. So I love it's it. really nice. Our dashboard has evolved over the past five or six years. Mm -hmm. It is like so beautiful. So we'll have yeah. to show you that today. Yeah. But if you're not a member, you can join. You can watch the master classes. You can. Poke around, you'll really enjoy being a member of Makers yes. Gonna Learn. We'll help you master your entire cricket from inspiration to education and giving you that motivation to really make it happen. Yeah. So we're super excited. And today it. is a Dollar Tree project. It is a Dollar Tree project. We okay. love Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. I know. Listen, I have been seeing this all over like Instagram Reels and Tic -tac. TikTok, like Tic Tac. It's everywhere. So we were like, we have to make yeah. it, obviously. Um, I did link these pumpkins for you all below. I'm hoping that they don't sell out. I found ours at our Dollar Tree shoved in a really? box. Yes, they were like shoved in a box and I was like, give me all the pumpkins. Like I need yeah. to have these because I've been looking for them. So hopefully you all are able to get your hands on them, but you can do this project. It's really, I'm really teaching them a paint technique. So you all are gonna be learning right. like how to use a paint technique on whatever pumpkins you can get your hands yes. on. So if it's not these Dollar Tree topiary pumpkins, you can use this technique Any, anywhere. Anywhere. I mean, you yes. could literally, I've seen this technique 
on the dollar pump, like little baskets you mm -hmm. do at like Walmart. You can do it on fabric. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many options. So, and a lot of you all request faux painting techniques, which we yes. don't do a lot because we're Cricut crafters. Right. Um, but for me personally, like I'm a We've painter by heart. In. Yeah. And I'm like, this is right up my alley. We are going to have a Cricut element because we have a bow. But other than that, I mean, this is just a good old school, like so fall good. craft. Fall is like craft season yes, in my brain. Yes, mine too. Right before Christmas. Yes. So, um, anyways, we can go ahead and Let's jump right in. into it. Okay. Let's dive right Let's in. Go ahead and I start. love seeing everyone. Dashboard's my favorite. Love font preview. Yes. I'm trying the membership. Membership is so worth it. Welcome, everyone. So love excited. It. We've got people here from everywhere Northern California, UK, everywhere. So, welcome. If you're new, we're so happy to have you here. If you're an OG, welcome back. I see some familiar faces. Um, but y'all, just let's just take a moment. Look at this. I love Look that. at this thing. I mean, this is from the Dollar Tree, okay? I just want y'all to take a moment and really take it in, okay? This is $5. This was $5. It's amazing. Five. Okay, this looks like I bought it at the Pottery Barn. This is my Dollar Tree Pottery Barn dupe. Um, I just, I love it because it, we've taken something and even Sadie said this when I finished it, she was like, that looks really heavy, Yeah. which in my brain means high quality. Yes. You know, like when people talk about pins and stuff and they're like, the heavier the pin, the better quality pin it is. A thousand percent. That's the same for me with these little pumpkins because they look like terracotta pumpkins. They're so beautiful. And y'all, these are like plastic yeah they're plastic and this technique would work on plastic flower pots too yeah absolutely yes. it, that's what i'm saying like y'all could even get those little velvet fabric pumpkins from the dollar tree and do this and actually sadie could you grab that little miniature one that i made over here so we started small because i could not find these and i was like i'm gonna make just a little baby one so i just grabbed three random pumpkins actually sadie found them for me Thank you. Look at this guy. He's little. He's little. This was the first one I made. This was gonna no be our. No way. This was gonna be our project, and I was like, man. I love that green. I know the green is beautiful. So not only are you guys gonna be able to create this with this orange, but you can use whatever colors you want. So if you want it to give more of that, just like aged, almost like a cement look, you can do whatever colors you like. So we did do the green on this one. This is a styrofoam pumpkin. This one's plastic. This one's plastic. So like you can carry this technique over to different materials, which is really what I love about this whole project. So I have already painted two of them. It is a little bit of like, it's like not a project you're just going to whip up in an hour. Um, it's more so something that you're like, let's have a craft morning with me and my girl, my gal pals. And we can all like sit around and have our coffee and like paint pumpkins. And so I painted two, but I'm going to show you how to paint the top one using the exact technique. Now, if you've wanted to make these before, you've probably seen a couple other techniques. I've seen people um, do these a few different ways. Um, this way looks and works best for me. This is like the exact look that I want. So I'm just going to show you all what I did. You're only going to need a few supplies and you probably have these laying around at your house yeah, somewhere. Yeah, you do. Because like you can see right here, we've just got these basic supplies. So. You are going to need paint color of your choice. Now, for me, I'm using this basic folk art terracotta. I did use almost a full bottle of this per pumpkin. Like, I would say you need three bottles of this for the three stacked pumpkin. And this one is probably 24 inches tall all the way, or maybe closer to 30. Um, but you need a bottle per pumpkin, I would say. Yes. As long, if they're any bigger than this, you're going to use a whole, almost a whole bottle. And it's mainly because you're going to be mixing it with baking soda. Now, a lot of you all have probably seen this. But what people do is they mix this baking soda in with their paint. And it creates this really beautiful, almost chalk paint. It's, yeah. I mean, you could technically just call it chalk paint. So we're mixing this and this. So you're going to need baking soda, your paint color of choice. Like I said before, I did green this would be beautiful in white but you're not going to get pick up that like aged effect i would recommend more of like an ivory so you can get the white highlights that we add in and we're going to be adding those highlights in with flour y'all this is just flour out of our kitchen Love so that. baking soda flour paint i've got you're going to need like i would get two or three paint brushes these are my favorite i'll link these for you all like these specific brushes I feel like you can get these at the Dollar Tree. Yeah. Um, but I'll link the Amazon ones. 
just because they come in like a pack. Um, but these are just my favorite. They're very, like I can dust with them, which we're mm -hmm. gonna kind of be dusting to add that faux finish. Um, so I've got those. And then you're gonna need this workable fixative. Now, um, I know, I already know. I already know I'm gonna get this question. Can these go outside? Because you can scratch these really quick, like easily, right? Are they easily yes. scratchable? Easily scratchable. I, listen, I tried like three or four different sealants, and let me just see if I can show you all on the back side. This workable fixative, what this is for is, like it has it right here. It protects pencil, pastel, and chalk drawings, prevents smudging and wrinkling, allows easy rework. So like if we wanted to go in and add some more of our flower, we could. So that's what this is really good for. I tried to like add flex seal to this. That was a hard no. I tried to add the Krylon crystal clear matte that you all hear me talk about a lot. Um, that was also a no for me. And the reason is because, let me see. I don't know if you all can tell. I tested a lot of stuff on the back side yeah. of this, um, but I just want to show you like, can they see that Sadie? Okay, wow. this is where I sprayed flex seal. This is where I sprayed the Krylon Crystal Clear Matte. And like, I didn't spray a lot of it because it was starting to cover up my flower. So it was starting to cover up like my distressing. Um, and I did not like that. So I'm just going to say for you all that this is an inside decoration. Okay. This, or if you want to put it outside, just know that it may not last for the full season. Right. Um, and that you're going to want to have it under a covered porch. I hate that because it's so pretty. So really, this would be beautiful by a fireplace or just like at the entrance of your house inside. Mm -hmm. Something like that is going to be a little bit more, that's what, that's what you want to do with this. So anyways, that's kind of my spiel on that. But let's go ahead and start with our painting. So we're going to need the co whatever color that you want to use. We're going to be using the terracotta color. And they have a burnt terracotta that's also really beautiful. Um, you'll see, let me show you all the difference here. So this is one that I painted using just straight up terracotta paint. Yeah. You can tell that this one's a little bit lighter. I added some white to the original one, but I wanted to see what this terracotta would look like. And I really like this. This, this is giving me like more of a true terracotta pot. So if you like this one, add a little bit of white, even some yellow, like a, like a touch of like a golden yellow can give you more of that vibe. But this is what we're doing today. So I'm just gonna take this terracotta paint and I'm taking the whole lid off because we use a lot of paint for this, okay? Don't be scared to use the paint. I'm just gonna go ahead and dump it out. And then what we're gonna do is add our baking soda in. So I'm Okay, just... if I've never did a paint technique, like what would you say for someone that's like watching this and is like, okay, that's really cute, you're doing it, but like, can <laughs> I do it too? Okay, yes you can. And I, this is sometimes hard for me to teach people because I taught painting for years. Like before I was here, I taught painting and sometimes it's hard for people to like break down this barrier in their brain, they're like, but how much, right. how fast do I mix it? How there, so with painting, the beauty in it is that there's flexibility and there's your painting texture, your painting color is never gonna look the same as your neighbors. It's just not, it's not even gonna look the same if you try to replicate the same mixture of, or combination of things. So sometimes my finishes are gonna be a little bit more chalky because I added a little bit more baking soda or right. sometimes it's gonna look a little bit more light orange because I added more white than I did on the other one. And that's just the nature of it. And I feel like this can be a good lesson in letting go. Yeah. So what my recommendation is for you all is to not stress yourself out over this. I promise it's going to work out. I'm going to be giving you all some loose measurements. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone loves that. If Lauren was here, she'd probably be like, put two tablespoons of baking soda per tablespoon of paint. But you've got me today. And I'm just going <laughs> to tell you to measure with your heart. Yes. Um, so I have squeezed out some paint on here. Here's a good visual and for you all that need a visual. Um, we just, I've just squeezed out some paint and I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of baking soda. Now the main thing to remember is that you can always add more, you can't take away. So you can start with a little bit. I kind of just cover the top of it like that. And then we're gonna take our paintbrush 
and I don't like to stir the pot. Never stir the pot. When you're mixing paint, don't stir the pot. You want to knead the dough, okay? You like, you need to knead, especially when you're like mixing paints because this paint just starts to turn into like a, it almost turns into like a dough. Really, yeah. the texture that you're going for here is like a, like a brownie batter. So when you start kneading it, it takes a second for the baking soda to start mixing in there. But this will turn into a nice little brownie batter. And you can see I'm just kneading it. I'm not stirring it. That's not going to do much. Really, all that's going to do is the paint's going to soak up into your brush and you're just going to lose a lot of paint especially with these big brushes. Now, if you wanted to mix this with like a popsicle stick or something like that, you totally could, but I just used the brush because then I can go straight onto my pumpkin and start painting. So I didn't, I didn't have to prep anything on my pumpkin. That's the beauty in using a chalk paint. So normally if you use like a, like an acrylic paint or even a wall paint, you would need to sand your base first so that the paint can adhere. The beauty in chalk paint is that you don't have to do that. And if you've ever used chalk paint with furniture, you don't have to do that. That's why people love chalk paint, I think, because it finishes well. You don't have to do that pre-sanding prep. I love chalk paint. Me too. Me too. Chalk it's paint is one of my favorite obsessions. Did you guys know, fun Tanner fact, <laughs> previous to Maker is going to learn, I actually worked, I wouldn't call it full-time, I had a full, I had a, what was full-time commitment um, yeah. for me. I worked for a company that sold chalk paint and it was like one of their top selling products. Yes. And we made everything. We painted chairs, we painted <laughs> tables, we painted everything. Put it so on it everything. Super, super fun. When you start using chalk paint, that's how it goes. You're like, what else can I put? Yeah. What else can I paint with this chalk paint? And y'all, you can use this type of paint like if you wanted to refinish a vase from like the Goodwill or Carm or a thrift store vase, like you can use the same technique and create this terracotta technique on other stuff. Yeah. So I just love that. I think that's so fun. So what you guys can see why she's still adding in baking soda. Well, mm -hmm. I'm wanting to get a really flat finish and I even bought this is, this is a matte paint, mm -hmm. but I want it to be really matte. So the more baking soda you add, the more matte it's going to be. And like I said earlier, I want it to be like a brownie batter kind of texture. I love that. So it's definitely getting thicker. You all could probably see. The way you refer to it as brownie batter, like I just love that. Like you know it's like ooey, it's gooey. Yes. It's not runny. Right. But it's not like. And you can see like it's sticking yeah. to my brush. So it's not. Yeah. It's just like brownie batter. It's perfectly it. like. So. That's about where we want to live. Like I said earlier, I know it's not like black and white. Tabitha's telling me I'm giving Bob Ross vibes. Yes, you are. I love it. Y'all, I have a Bob Ross bobblehead on my <laughs> desk in my office. I love Bob Ross. Um, <laughs> happy little trees. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to give you all a close up. You see. So nice can you and explain buttery. just a little bit more about like what the baking soda does for the paint? I mean, I can't give you a scientific explanation. Not in a scientific, but like a crafter explanation. Okay. Um, can we just mix chalk paint with regular paint? Kathy's asking. You can just literally use chalk paint. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to. Oh, you're just asking if you want to change colors. Yes, you can mix the two together. Um, but the baking soda is basically, in my brain, it's absorbing some of that glossiness of the paint and kind of making it into more, it's giving it a new texture. So it's giving us that really, really flat terracotta pot finish or just like a, like a ceramic pot or if you can imagine a ceramic pot in any color, the baking soda will turn any color into that just like really flat, almost like concrete, like it gives it that concrete look. So that's kind of what it's doing, I guess, if that's what you're asking, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so you can see, like, it's definitely not as shiny as it was. I don't know if you all can really tell. I'll put some out, just like a little bit out here. Um, so you can see what it looked like before. I don't know if y'all can really tell that, but it's definitely more matte. And so that's about where we want it to be. Okay. Now it doesn't look like what our finished pumpkins look like right. yet because we haven't added like the flower and stuff. So yeah. I'm going to move, I'm just going to move some of this stuff over. 
and I've got my little pumpkin here and I am just going, I'm not going to paint the top yet. This is going to be the last thing I paint the stem. I'm going to start at the top here. Okay. And I'm just going to start painting this down. Now you will need two coats of paint for this. Look, look at our brush strokes. I mean, those are perfection. Look, can y'all? Perfection. I wish that you guys could really experience the texture on this because when you start painting, you can really see where the baking soda is mixed in with that paint. And that's what we want. It looks very gritty. And so that's what's giving us the, the terracotta vibe. And I'm just obsessed with this color, y'all. Like, I love burnt orange. It's so pretty for the fall. I'm doing, for my fall decor this year, I'm doing black and copper. Ooh. That's, like, my vibe. So I got a bunch of these, like, black tin pumpkins from Kirkland's, and they're copper on the inside, and you put candles in them. And I'm going to do orange mums, like, the dark orange mums. Yeah. And I'm really excited. I think it's going to be very cute. I'm going to be home for like Halloween and stuff with the babe. So I thought I should make it nice and yeah. Halloween-y and like cozy. Oh my gosh. I um, have a friend. Well, I used to be the house that hosted Halloween for like all my kid friends' kids. Yeah. And it's been so fun. But we live literally in the middle of nowhere now. <laughs> <laughs> like four, five minutes down the road from me. Five minutes from Alicia. But like there's no Nobody. other house around. So anyway. <laughs> Can't, not really a Halloween house, so now we host it. At, I say we. My friend hosts it, and I just get to go. Sarah Ray, uh, and it's so much fun. We and she it. decorates so And she decorates cute. so good. Yeah. Yes. I just bring the Chick-fil-A tray and say thanks for having us. <laughs> I did, we've done Halloween at our house a little bit, too, but I keep having kids, and, like, I'm always having a baby at Halloween. So as soon as I'm not, like, next year, we're, go, we're back to it. We're back to it because I love Halloween and fall and all that. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'm not gonna paint the stem yet. Um, the other ones don't have stems. Like the other ones are just the top and the bottom. So really when you paint these, you can just put your hand inside of here and kind of like rotate it around. If your hand's small enough, you can put it in the top there and just kind of paint it like that, which is really nice. Um, but we do want to let that dry. So while it's drying, you can use a heat gun on those, but we're gonna do a Cricut element and we're gonna be um, making a bow and adding um, a little decal to our bow. Yeah, we don't recommend using like vinyl on this technique because it will uh, like... You it'll know, peel off. Let me just show off. you guys what'll yeah, happen. Yeah. Because I was like very, I wanted to have a Cricut element on this and I really, I wanted to, I was thinking like a monogram here because I know a lot of you all like to incorporate monograms onto your stuff, but it was just, I was like, I can't, I don't think I can use heat transfer vinyl. If I did use regular vinyl, I don't even know if it would stick. The transfer tape would pull off paint. So I tested it. We can go overhead. I tested like a corner of some vinyl and barely stuck it on y'all and it just peeled right off. So not going to be your best bet there. Um, but I did add a bow and a Cricut element on there. And y'all know we love our bows around here. So we are going to be creating a bow and adding some vinyl to that. So I'm going to scooch this stuff up and then we're going to make a quick little bow. I love having Alicia to teach me how to make bows. It's <laughs> one of the things like I struggle with personally. I, let me know in the comments, like, do you struggle with making bows? Like, I think it's a, it's a hard thing for people sometimes and I yeah. get it. I get it. It's not, they're not that easy. Not all of them. Right. There's like simpler versions of bows. Also, my equilibrium's off, so if you guys see me like, <laughs> I have lost asked, my balance. Uh, when you're due, have you have you shared? Um, you October twelfth is when I'm due, but we're not making it. So <laughs> we're not making it. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not gonna happen, guys. It's not gonna happen. I just um, know it's not gonna happen. Um, but we may make it. We might make it into October. Yeah. We'll see. I'm 36 weeks today, so we are fitting to find out. So I've got mainly Dollar Tree ribbon here. I pulled some Hobby Lobby. This is like Christmas ribbon, but I thought it was cute and fallish. Um, and I've just got some different colors. Now, I kind of want to pluck this bow off to show you guys. Do it. No, it's okay. I'm it's okay. Gonna... You're like, I can't. <laughs> I can't take it off. I can't take it off. Uh... I don't love these scissors for this, but we can make it work. So 
This is kind of a new bow technique for me. I haven't used this technique except for this okay. bow. Um, I know how to make a bow like this another way, but mm. this way seems to be easier, but I haven't perfected it. But I'm right. gonna show you all what I did. So um, I really love this one, but I was worried we wouldn't have enough, but now that I'm looking at it, I think we do. This is Dollar Tree ribbon, y'all. Dollar that... Tree's really stepping it up. And uh, yeah. Paula, how about a water slide? A water slide? Is Ooh, no. N just the water mm -mm. activating with the baking soda would probably not be good either. No, it would not. It would be not good. Yeah, and it, it would, like, take away your flowery effect. Um, honestly, y'all, just, I wouldn't add any vinyl to this. Just add it to your ribbon. It's really pretty. And you can even put the bow at the top of your pumpkin if you wanted to. I didn't really like how it looked, so I put mine at the base of it. Um, so yeah, I just wouldn't put any on the actual pumpkin. Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing, let's go to camera one. I'm cutting a strip. I could tell you guys how long this is with a little measuring tape. Yeah. Um, I didn't bring one. I mean, here. it looks about to be like what a yard, maybe a little less, like a little less than a yard, maybe, maybe 24 inches. Okay. 24 inches. So I got one strip of that. Ooh, that was almost exactly. I'm going to trim this. So we're going to do, they just all need to be the same length. I would not go less than 24 inches if you're doing these big topiaries. This is just a good size bow for this pumpkin. So I've got two strips of this. I'm going to do two strips of this one. This is also Dollar Tree. I love it. And I'm going to do six strips of ribbon all together. Six strips. Yes. And you can do and different notice widths how too. she's not doing two patterns. Like I love to just yes. like teach like for, I don't know about all of you. Some of you may relate to this. I am someone that is not near as mm -hmm. design oriented as Alicia or as my dear wife, Courtney or Lauren. Like mm -hmm. they all three have things that I don't have. So if you too think that they have something you don't have, that's fine. We can learn from them right. and just look at what they're doing and like, you know what I mean? Like there's so much to learn from them. So Yeah, and I can talk about that. Yeah, tell us. So like right now, and you all saw me reach for this one before I reached for this gingham one because I have a pattern, okay? I have a solid and then I have a more simple pattern. And so for me, I feel like that was going to look the best. And even on the original ribbon, I used two solids in a pattern. That way that pattern, pattern really pops. And I was pulling out in the original ribbon, I pulled out some green as well as some orange as my solids. And so sometimes you can take a pattern and pull out the solid colors in it. And that really brings the whole thing together. So that pattern ribbon is like the one that ties it together. Mm -hmm. um, but we ran out of our green ribbon and I thought this would be really pretty. This kind of incorporates the gold elements in our ribbon here, um, but I didn't have enough. And so I'm gonna go with this. And the reason I think that this is gonna work is because it's thicker. So it's gonna give contrast in the size rather than the pattern. So we are, mixing patterns, but at the same time, we're doing a totally different size. So we've got a skinnier version and then like a thicker plaid yeah. version. And that's kind of how you can get away with mixing two plaids together. I don't think this one would look as good because they're so similar and they're the same width and almost the same colors. And so they're not giving a contrast. You've got to have that contrasting element. So I'm going to cut two strips of this bigger uh, gingham ribbon and that's gonna be our other one. I love doing multiple widths of ribbon in a bow. It just gives it a lot of dimension and this is a, that's a big thick bow. She has a big mama. <laughs> okay and then I'm gonna cut one more. Wow advanced. and just to remind you guys if you're not already trying the Makers Learn membership we just want to invite you it's only a dollar today. You get 20 download credits so you could grab a cut file grab a font, you have 20 and seven days. And if you love it, you can stay a monthly member and have an unlimited download. Yes. Join our Facebook group and so much more. Okay, y'all, let me just show you really quick how easy this is. It's just gonna blow your mind. It blew my mind when I first did it. Cause I was like, what have I been doing my whole life? I've been making ribbons in the wrong way or making bows the wrong way. Yeah. Okay, and then I've got, this is my little tie guy. Now you can use a zip, uh, zip tie for this part but we're just gonna use this, okay? So, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna half it, okay? 
We've okay. got it. It's folded in half. I'm going to skip the orange one. I'm going to get another my, of my patterned one. We're just folding it right in half. Easy. Easy, right? It's so easy. Okay. So I've got two. I'm going to skip that next one. We're going to get a big, big boy. We're going to fold that in half. Okay. And we're going to go back to our orange. See, we've got a pattern going. Got my orange, got my plaid. We're just folding these in half, y'all. And look, folding them in half, making sure the edges are kind of like kind of in line. And then I'm gonna fold this one in half too. Okay. And look. Now we've got our tails. These are our tails. These are our bows. I'm gonna take this or a zip tie. And we're going to tie this at the base of our bow, okay? I'm just going to tie it right here. This is the easiest bow you guys will ever make. Simple. So simple. Okay, I'm just tying it right there. Now, I'm going to trim off these tails. You could probably tie another, we'll tie another knot so it doesn't come undone. I'm going to tie a knot, trim this off. This is why I preach this all the time, y'all. Don't stress and overthink crafting. It mm -hmm. really does not have to be that hard. It may look like it's hard, but it's really, really. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be fun. It's yes, supposed to be stress-free. I love it. Okay. okay, a lot of people have already been making projects from Maker U sophomore year. Ooh. Sophomore year, we have our first co coaching call tomorrow night, <gasps> 7.30. I'm so All right? excited. Be there, be there, be there. And then Stacy asked, how much is the monthly fee? So our monthly fee is only $27 a month. It is such a great deal. And here's why. Our huge library of cut files that we add to every month are over 1,000 plus fonts with the commercial license, plus the master classes, plus our 30-day challenge, plus our Facebook community. My friends, you will not need to go anywhere else for your nope. crafting and cricketing needs, which is such a great feeling for us to be able to ride that to you because mm -hmm. we've been using a cricket here for over like 13 years like we really love our cricket we love it yes okay if y'all are like what are you doing i'm dovetailing this is called dovetailing dove this is a dovetail cut what i'm doing is folding my ribbon like a taco so i'm just folding it like a taco i'm putting this open edge towards me okay the folded edge is away from me the folded edge is over here, open edge is over here uh, towards me. I'm cutting up towards my folded edge at a 45 degree angle. Yeah. And it's creating a dovetail. Okay. I do this with all of my bows to give them a nice clean finish. Remember, folded edge is away from you, open edge is towards you. And you're going to cut from this corner up towards the folded edge at a 45 degree angle. And that's going to give you these really pretty dovetails. Now, if I folded it the other way, it starts to get confusing. If you get this technique down, just do the folded edges away from you. The folded edge is away from you. Okay. Yeah. And you're going to cut from this corner out of 45 up towards the folded edge. That's it. Rinse and repeat. And this is going to make our bow look really nice. And we're going to actually, I wanted to go ahead and make the bow before we did our cricket element because we need to measure one of our tails. And depending on the size of your ribbon and the length of your tails will right. determine the size of our cricket cutout. So I'm just going to keep cutting these. Got three more. I actually really like the plaid on plaid on this. I was a little worried, but I think it's just kind of cute. I love it. Okay. Does anyone have questions about the bow? That's a great question. We do not have specifically any questions that I see regarding bow. Uh -huh. Some people have been getting super, super excited about Maker U. So Ooh. you upload your Maker U projects at the same time at the end. Yeah, we will have, after we get through the whole curriculum, there will be a call, um, like a form, a call out for you to submit for graduation. So, yes. yeah. I love it. So okay. Cool. Can't wait for the call. I love school. Yes, Beth. Call. We love school too. Okay. This is what it looks like. Now what you're going to need to do is start the fluffing 
process. Now, the reason that this is gonna work so good is because I'm using wired ribbon. If you're not using wired ribbon, this is not gonna look as good, I promise you. If you've just got some like flopsy, even if it's a pretty ribbon, this is gonna look so much better if you use wired ribbon. It's just gonna be fluffy, it's gonna stay up on its own, and it's just gonna give you an overall better effect. And so I'm kind of pulling the tails out too. I'm kind of spacing them out so they're on all four corners. I love it. And you have to kind of work with it for a minute until you get it exactly how you want it, okay? You can even pull some to the other side. Holly, we got our pumpkins, believe it or not, from the Dollar Tree. Yes. Ooh, so good. I love it. Okay, and I'll refluff this too once we actually get it onto the pumpkin, but y'all. It looks so good. It's so easy, and you can even, I like to put my hand inside of these loops and make them stand up on their own. And look how cute that is, y'all. And already, I can tell, this tail's a little longer. He's going to be my tail. That's my happy harvest tail. I'm going to put my, my decal on that, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I've got my bow pretty much how I want it. I'm going to measure this area that's showing. I'm not going to measure all the way up. I'm just going to measure the area that's actually showing uh -huh. um, with my non-existent tape measure. I'm going to say that's like <laughs> three by, I think these are two and a half. Okay. Um, tall. Yeah, they're two and a half tall by three. So let's go into design space. And what I'm going to do, oops, is create, I'm going to pull in a basic shape. Now you could just use a rectangle for this, or you could even go down here and use this dove, dovetail ribbon part if mm -hmm. you wanted to. Um, but you can see we have this like other edge, so it messes with our measurements. So I just like to use a square. Okay, I'm just going to unlock it. My width is going to be three, and my height is going to be two and a half. Okay, we can delete that. Um, I feel like it needs to be a little bit longer. Let's do three and a half. Okay. And we can change it to orange. I'm going to be using this beautiful bronze foiled HTV today. Y'all, I got this off Amazon, and I linked it for you all. If you're about to get into some fall and Christmas crafts, get this vinyl. It weeds like butter. The brand is so random. We literally don't use anything else from them. But this foiled vinyl is chef's kiss. Yeah. It is awesome. so good. And I have used it. I used it last year on the Santa's Magic Key. I don't know if you guys saw that project. but Oh, if you didn't. Ugh, we make so many one. projects. Like, you just need. <laughs> There's so many that there you can really is. take advantage of. Okay. Oops. So I'm in my system fonts. I'm using the font Mystical. Now, if you're like, where did you get that font? That's a Maker's Gonna Learn font. So if you're a member, you have access to this font. If you're not a member, you can become a member and you will get access to use these fonts to make your own crafts. So this is one that we really love. I'm just gonna kind of resize it. You can make this say whatever you want. Um, I'm just gonna put Happy Harvest. I feel like that's very fitting. And since I don't know the size, Sometimes I do this if I'm guessing the size, but you shouldn't guess the size. You should always measure. Yeah. I'm just going to make one a little bit smaller <laughs> just yeah. to be safe. And then we can hide our square. So that was like super easy, right? Now we just need to go to make it. So we've designed it. We've resized everything and we're going to go to make it. Now, if you have not seen us upload a font and you just became a member, make sure you all are taking that 30 days to master your Cricut course. And there's a training. Will you go over to the Maker's Gonna Learn yeah. site for them and show them maybe the dashboard and the font area for yes. sure? Yes, yes, I can totally do that. So that. this is the main dashboard. Well, let me go to the homepage first because if you just go to the link, like the Maker's Gonna Learn website, you're gonna come to this, okay? Now, when you are a member, obviously you're gonna get a login and you're gonna be, have access to this dashboard. So whenever I go here, I can look at my fonts right here, but I'm gonna show you all how to get there through the dashboard that we keep talking mm -hmm. about. You can see here, we've got fonts, cut files, courses. We have resources. Sometimes we just randomly add free resources like puff vinyl heat settings and card making measurements and things like that. Um, you can favorite stuff and it'll pop in here. All of this stuff is super helpful. Even our calendar, look, you can see our topiaries are right yeah. here, ready to go. So I'm gonna select fonts 
And then you can browse using just our different categories. I love our simple categories. Like there's yes. just a few and they really help us. It is. And it like if you just wanted, you knew you wanted a script for this project because I feel like a script would fit perfectly. You can go in here and see. We have our sample text. This is the name of the font and the sample text. And I could type in happy harvest love and that. then I can preview it. This is the feature that I was saying that I love so much. You can preview it and then you can say, oh, I really love that xylophone font. Mm -hmm. I'm going to download that. And so, so you just fun. click the little download button. It goes into a zip folder. You can unzip it. And then we're going to double click it here, install your font. And then you would just have to go back into design space. And I'll show you all. I'll just show you all fully how to do this go back into design space make sure to save your project before you do anything mm -hmm. else okay save it and then we're just gonna reload design space and that font is gonna magically appear in Cricut design space for Love us that. and then you have so it forever easy. yeah ready to go with your computer and y'all when you become a member it's different when you're a member with us versus like a Cricut access member which is like the pro version of design space you don't lose the font you download from us. So right. if you downloaded this xylophone font and we'll go to our systems and system font and type it in. If you download this font, like it's yours, you own it forever. Yeah. I mean, you can't use it for commercial license if you become decide to not be a member anymore, mm -hmm. but you can use it for your projects. We love that. So that's that font. And again, you can join for a dollar. Dollar. I'm going to change it back because I want to use this font, but, <laughs> and then, so now we're going to go to make it. So that was just a quick little how to upload a font tutorial. I'm going to pull this down. Now we are using heat transfer vinyl, which means we need to mirror our image. So right now it's reading left to right. We need to mirror it because we're going to be cutting from the back side of the heat transfer vinyl. So I've got my two copies there. I'm going to select continue. Let me turn my She's not even plugged in. Uh oh. Hold on. Please hold. <laughs> We've been using lots of different. We crickets. have been using all sorts of stuff. Okay. Let's retry that. Let me turn her on. We're using the Explore 3 today. Um, but you can use your maker. You can cut this with your joy, yeah. whatever you've Annette, got. Annette, you said when will we have 3D images? We have 3D images. Yes. And we have a whole category of 3D cut files. And most of our 3D cut files have a supporting video. So feel free to go over there, browse on the website. What's cool about Makers Gonna Learn, if you're not a member, you can browse all of our files before you even join. But be sure to click the link that we have here so you can get in on the dollar trial. So just click that and join in. Yes. Michelle says, so do I need Cricut Access with Makers Gonna Learn? Do I have to pay for both? No. If you have Makers Gonna Learn, you do not need Cricut Access because you can get all the cut files, all the training, everything from us. Um, and Cricut Access is just giving you art. They're not really teaching you how to use your Cricut and make actual craft projects. So, exactly. Great question. Okay, so I've got my, um, this is that foiled, look how beautiful this color is. It's like a bronze. So I love it. It looks dirty, but it's got like a carrier sheet, so it's fine. Um, what I'm going to do is just attach it up here, okay? It does not like to stick. Like, I know I'm using a lot grip mat, but this is a sticky lot grip mat. It doesn't even like to stick to my other mat, so I'm just going to tape this down. A little Cricut hack for you. Y'all will see us do this a lot. Um, if your HTV's not sticking or something, you can totally tape it down so it doesn't move. And we use our mats like crazy around here, like... We have so many mats. I feel like people are like, just get me mats. I'm like, we do. <laughs> we do all the time. We need to probably just clean our mats yes. realistically. Get, is what our, get our baby wipes. Just <sighs> clean them. I know. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a process. So, so. Fun. Um, I'm just going to tape it down for now, and it should be all good to go. Love it. Okay. So there we go. Now, back in design space, where I tape this down, I want to show you all. If you do tape something down and it's a little close to the edge, you can hit cancel and you can just kind of scooch these in a little bit. Yes. Just scooch them right on in and then hit continue. Like I said, we're using an Explore 3 and we're going to be cutting this on everyday iron on cut setting, normal pressure, and then we can go ahead and send this through our Cricut. So let me move my pumpkin so y'all can see. 
So we're just loading it in. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna load. I've got my fine point blade in, and then when this starts flashing, we'll hit go. Love it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint my second coat on our pumpkin. So, so fun. It's already almost dry. The good thing about using those flat paints is that they dry very quickly. Love that. Okay, please cut correctly, that'd be great. Okay, so second coat, you want to make sure it's very dry before you go in and um, do a second coat. Otherwise, every time you brush stroke over it, it's just going to keep picking up paint. Right. So you've really got to make sure that first coat is dry. It's like when you paint your house, you don't go in and paint the second coat if the paint's still wet. You do the same thing here. It's the same concept. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm not painted that stem yet. Love it. Yes, if you are not using baby wipes to clean your mats, I have so many videos talking about cleaning your mats, and baby wipes is probably my favorite way. Yes. My, it's the easiest, mess-free way for you to rock it. Yeah, you can just have them on hand, too, you know? Exactly. Okay. So, we've got our second coat on. That second coat goes on much quicker. And I'm also going to go ahead and paint the stem now. Now, the next thing we need to do is add our flower. Now, for this step, we do not want it to be completely dry, but we do not want it to be soaking wet either. Yeah. So we're going to kind of let this sit for a minute while we weed. And then you can tell when it starts to dry because it starts to mattify. And y'all could tell like from when we first painted it, like right now it's shiny. Mm -hmm. Here in a minute, it's going to start to mattify and that's how we know it's drying. But we don't want to let it dry completely because we want our flower to stick in some areas, but not the whole thing. We don't want to co cover this in flour and then it just be like a, a white flowery pumpkin. Yeah. So we're just going to let it sit for a minute. Excuse me. And our machine should be done cutting any time now. Love it. Such an easy technique. I know. We, oh. We're not completely done yet, but like the, already we just painting. have one more step or yeah. two more steps pretty much. Yeah. So. so good. Yeah, I love it. Let me get a weeding tool out here. Let okay. us know if you guys have any questions about today's project or uh, Maker University, our dollar trial, any questions like that, just let us know. We'd love to help answer those. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, I'm looking for a pen pen tool. This is a pen pen tool. This is a very fine point weeding tool that you can use to get out the little middles of these letters. I love this for stuff like this. Yeah. Perfect. And Holly, I don't think you should worry about like any mildewing or anything like that. I think you're in the clear. Oh yeah. No, I knew, I meant to address that too because I feel like people have asked that in the past like or even like using flour, mm -hmm. like using food mm -hmm. products. It's like I said, this is probably like a project that's going to last a year or two maybe. Yeah. Like don't fret if it doesn't last forever. It really doesn't take so long that you're like I don't want to make it if it's only going to last one year. It doesn't take that long to create these, really. Exactly. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off of our mat. I've got my Cricut Mini Easy Press in here. And I'm going to put it on the medium heat setting. I love that vinyl. I know. I can't wait for y'all to see it when we actually apply it. I'm just going to trim this off. This excess. Yeah. I'm wondering how gold glitter would look with these pumpkins. What do you think, Alicia? Oh, like where? I don't know. I'm re it was a comment. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like if you Christmas. added gold glitter, heck yeah, yeah do it. Love it. Love I think it, you could it. add it to the greenery. Mm -hmm. If I added any gold glitter element, I would like add it onto the greenery, if that makes sense. I love that. You could even just spray a little um, like any type of adhesive, like light tack adhesive, and then just sprinkle some glitter on it. Yep. That's just a fun idea. And then I'm just gonna weed all of this off. So we're weeding everything that we don't want. Look how beautiful this bronze so is. So good. I'm obsessed. And y'all, this would not work as well if you're using adhesive vinyl. So heat transfer vinyl is really good when you're working with delicate cuts 
such as little words like this, mm -hmm. um, mainly because it has that built-in carrier sheet. When you're working with adhesive vinyl, you have to actually apply the carrier sheet. Uh, I'm sorry, apply the transfer sheet. And these little weeding parts get very hairy. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> they get very hairy, they get hard to weed. And you can see I'm just going back and forth between my pin pin tool and my regular weeding tool. Yes. I love to use them interchangeably as well. Yes. Just using it for what its purpose is. Okay, and then my bow. I've got my bow. Let me turn my heat press on to the medium heat setting. This takes like 2.5 to heat up. And like I said before, I want to put it on this tail because he's a little bit longer. And I think I want it to be kind of pointing down. Look, y'all, my guess, my guess measurement worked. Love it. My husband tells me I have this special talent of guessing measurements. I mean, and I feel like he's right. <laughs> <laughs> he can be like, okay, how long is this? And I'll be like, 32 inches. Wow. And it will measure it like, I know that's so silly. That but is so exciting. That's how I decorate in my house. I'm like, um, have y'all seen the TikTok and they're like me at TJ Maxx trying to see if this will fit in my house mm -hmm. and the girl like puts her arms on the side of the cupboard and then she like gets in her car and drives home and then yeah. goes to her house and she's like yeah it'll fit I'm I like that's that. me that's me that. so funny so let me make sure my vinyl is not messed up uh-oh okay it's not Yay. so I'm gonna go ahead now with um, normal HTV most of the time it's a warm peel with this metallic HTV and typically like glitter or holographic HTVs, mm -hmm. you're going to want to do a cool peel, which means that we're going to heat this up to adhere it because it's a heat transfer vinyl, but you don't want to remove your carrier sheet until it's completely cooled down. Perfect. So this is a cool peel and I am just applying some pressure. We have a new hack video y'all we're doing um, oh. an update doing 20 more Cricut hacks to take you from beginner to pro and there's a hack in here that's going to be perfect oh, for yeah. you guys that uh, need cool pills. So it is a good get one. Ready. Get ready. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that on there for a second let it cool down and our pumpkin he is starting to dry. Mm -hmm. He needs to be a little bit more dry but. Well we normally just put the bow on add the greenery right? Yeah, you'll just put the bow yeah. on, add the greenery. Super easy. Um, so what you're going to do, and I'm going to just let him dry for another second. Let me move that there. So I've got my one pumpkin. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and have these. Actually, no, we're going to let that dry. Add in our moss, add in our florals Love while that. it's drying. Okay. Right. So I've got lots of little greeneries here. Oh, I thought these were my nippers, but they're <laughs> not my nippers. Oh, they are here. I was like, I got them. Yay. Okay, so I've got my hot glue gun on. What I'm going to do is start applying some greenery, and this is all Dollar Tree greenery. I just got some, like, boxwood leaves. I got some of these maple leaves, and I'm just going to cut off some stems and start adding these in. The moss is a very messy, y'all. Very messy. Very messy. Um, it just is what it is, but it looks so good. Yeah. So I'm going to add in some of that. I've got my moss here. I'm going to actually start with my moss, and then we'll add in our greenery. Okay. So I've got it right here. What I'm going to do is, t has that not been heating up this whole time? <laughs> I had it on, but it's not, it wasn't like plugged in, I don't think. Yeah. Let me see. No, it's not. Okay. All of our hot glue guns. Maybe so we're due. Weird. We're due. We're due for a new one. Yep. Okay. I'm going to let my hot glue gun keep heating up. So what you're going to do is just take some of this moss, and y'all, this is like the this is like the messiest moss ever. I like to kind of form it. And also, you're going to see this dusty, smoky stuff. Me and Sadie were like freaking out the other day because it was like, it doesn't look like dust. It's like smoke. Yeah. It's not, though. I don't think. Anyways, you're going to have to kind of put it on here and then like add, lift it up and add glue as you go. Mm -hmm. And it's going to make a mess. So like have, have your stuff down. 
So we're going to add that in. You can kind of place it and then we'll go in and like add yeah. some more in. I'm just going to add some on this left side and that's it. Now, Alicia, is the dollar store online, like, able, do you think they would have these there? They do. I'll link them. Oh, okay. So, they're linked. So, if you're worried, I know a friend said, I'm in upstate New York. I don't have the 3 to $5 section. Check the links down below. We yeah. We have a link these for you. You will be surprised. You can order them online. So, yay. Yay. I love, love it. it. Okay. I'm just, my hot glue gun is going to take a minute. So, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought he was heating up this whole time. Right. I turned him on before we even started. <laughs> so we're going to let that. I'm just going to keep nipping my little leaves so they're ready to go. So you can just nip all these. Can y'all see me over here? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I didn't use a ton. Like you, I have a bunch here, but you really don't need a ton. Honestly, just with the moss, I really loved it. Um, but I was like, you know, we'll add in a little bit more. We'll add in some extra. And I really love these boxwoods from the Dollar Tree this year as well. Yeah, super fun. Okay. So, this is completely cooled down. We're going to go ahead and pull this off very slowly. Y'all look how pretty that is. Love it. So, our bow is done. We'll just have to attach that with hot glue. Once we are completely finished, I'm going to sit it to the side and I'm just going to sit this to the side too, because obviously my hot glue gun's not ready. We can go ahead and start flowering. And this is the last step on our little pumpkin journey. So what I like to do is take a plate, take my pumpkin, I'm gonna take a different plate, just take a different plate. You don't need a whole lot for this, especially um, if, well, I'm only doing one pumpkin, so I really don't need that much. That's probably good. But take a separate plate, and all you're gonna do is take some of this, and we're gonna sprinkle it down the cracks of the pumpkin, okay? I'm just sprinkling her down. So remember, we didn't let we didn't do this while it was completely wet, mm -hmm. but we're also not doing it when it's completely dry. Either. Right. Okay. I love it. it looks love it? so good. Okay. Let's. I mean, boom. I mean, it looks kind of crazy, but this it's is crazy. why we have this is why we have multiple brushes. So what I like to do is go very gently. And we're going to kind of dust this down. Wow. Okay. So, uh, guys, I'm about to have to peace out because I have a meeting I have to run to. It's very busy over here at Maker's Going to Learn. Yes. So this I'm is a long one. You. No, you're good. I'm going to have to peace out here in just a moment. Um, I just don't want you all to think anything's <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Nothing's when wrong. I, when you stop hearing from me and then... <laughs> Uh, Alicia will finish us out for today's project, but yeah. this is so much fun. And congratulations, everyone. Michelle, I know you are joining the membership today, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Yay. Be sure to take advantage, and we can't wait to see you inside the membership. My best advice is join the membership, of course, for a dollar today. Get plugged into the Facebook group. Start browsing around the files. Take the 30-day challenge, and it's going to be so fun. So welcome, Love everyone. It. Can you use baking soda for that part, too? I, you know That's what? That's a great question. I questioned that because I was, like, thinking the same exact thing. I did not test out the baking soda, but I think that you can do the same thing. Like, if you've just got baking soda, you could just adapt the same technique. So, but we're just using our flour here. And look, if you get... If it's too wet in some spots, sometimes it'll kind of chunk off like that. But we can go back in and add some more flour for this. So really, flour or baking soda is going to be perfectly fine either way. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure behind my brush either. I just want you all to know. I'm just barely dusting this on, okay? But it may take a little bit of practice just to find that, like, happy wet to dry spot but y'all this isn't supposed to look perfect it's supposed to look kind of messy and old and that's what I love about like rustic crafts because the mistakes are easily hideable 
So I just went back over those spots that kind of chunked up and put a little bit more flour on them. You can kind of tap, 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 tap. And then I'm going to dust off. I don't want so much excess up here, so I'm going to dust this off. And just keep working it until you get it exactly how you want it. Okay. And I also really like for, like, the hump part. I like the cracks to be white and then, like, the hump part to be more orange. So I try to focus my white into the crevices there in between each hump. That's just what I think looks the best, personally. And look how cute is that, guys? I love it. I just want to terracotta everything. I don't even want to call it terracotta -ing. <laughs> We need, like, a name for it. Not terracotta -ing, but, like, something. <laughs> so funny. So that's pretty much it, y'all. I mean, that is so easy. Like, I can't even. So... Let me get everything out of the way. This craft is so, there's so many different elements and I feel like everything starts to get in the way. So we have our small pumpkin. If we can go to camera one so everybody can see what the heck's going on. Um, I'm going to kind of fold this over because I still need, I still need the paper because we're about to get into this moss and the moss is like insanely messy. I feel like I'm going to move all this off so we can get a pretty, Final shot of everything here. Okay, so we need to add our florals. My hot glue gun has been heating up. The red light is on, okay? I've seen it. I've seen it. I'm hoping it's on. It's working. Oh, yes, honeys. So I'm just putting a little bit right underneath here, okay? I'm just putting it on there and then pressing it down. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. And I like my moss. I don't know if this makes sense to anyone else. I like my moss to be a little drippy. Like, I like it to look like it's been there for 100 years. <laughs> Drippy's like the only, yeah, drippy's like the only word I can think of. Um, so I'm going to add in some of this, y'all. Add it where you feel like you need it. And you can even, like, lift up little pieces of this moss and stick it back on. Be careful not to burn your fingers. I'm adding some, like, inside of the moss so it kind of sticks. I'm really curious if you all can actually see, like, this smoke that I'm talking about. Can you see it, Sadie? I saw it earlier. Did you? I, it's smoke. Like, it's smoky. It's, I can't even say it's dusty. It's literally smoky. Who knows? It's from the dollar store, y'all, so, like, just <laughs> proceed with caution. And then I'm just going to kind of get rid of anything that's covering that lip of that pumpkin. I don't, because we need it to tuck. We need, like, this one to sit on top of here really nicely. And then what I like to do is take this. So my next piece, I'm going to kind of pop it on. I wish that you all could see this better. Like, I don't know how well that you all can see this, Sadie. Can you see me, like, adding things in? Okay. So what I like to do is take some hot glue on the stem and just kind of add it like that. And then I'm going to just stick this in my moss and kind of hold it there. Okay. And you can kind of eyeball them first before you commit. So I'm just going to add some more here and poke it in. Ooh, I love this. The box that I used on the other one did not ha have the orange in it. And I love the orange in this box wood. It's very pretty. Lots of people are saying I see the smoke. I know, it's kind of creeping me out, but whatever. Okay, now I'm going to do some over here. So I'm kind of like stacking them. Stacking this moss up, it's going to give it a really good, some really good dimension. Look. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But you can kind of form it with your hands. I'm just going to sit it up here. Okay, and then, listen, have a bunch of glue sticks on hand. You're going to need a lot of glue. We're just going to add this in all the way around. Okay. 
beautiful. Oh, I stuck my finger right in that glue, y'all. Stuck it right on, right on top of it. Okay, I want this little guy to stay here. I'm gonna glue that down. Beautiful, and I'm trying to remove my spider webs, like my hot glue webs as I go. I'm gonna actually do some leaves on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and add that on. So you can add your glue here. You can kind of tuck it just like that. Sometimes it's easier to add these stems in after the pumpkin's on. Sometimes it's easier to add them first. So if you find that it's not sticking, go ahead and put like the next layer on and then try to add your stem in. But then you can see I can pop that on there. I'm going to put another piece of this boxwood on here, though. Um, not that piece. Let's see here. You got to find the right piece. You know what I'm saying? All right. I'm going to add in another hot glue gun or another hot glue stick. I've got moss stuck to my glue gun. I'm telling y'all, this is like kind of old fashioned crafting. I love it. Some basic glue guns, some paint, some florals. Okay, and then pick your favorite side of your pumpkin. This is my favorite part, like picking my favorite edge of my pumpkin. And then we're just gonna pop that on. Now you can glue these if you want to, like add a little bit of glue around that bottom edge. And then you're just gonna pop that on. And then the last thing that you need to do is add your bow. I'm gonna add the bow and then give you guys a big reveal. Let me like throw this away so it's out of the way because we are done. And that was so, I mean, I feel like that was pretty easy. Did you guys love it? Are you going to create these? Do you have these pumpkins at your Dollar Tree? Because I know that they're not easy to find. Um, and we try not to do stuff like that, but that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the show. This technique is so good because you can use it on so many different things, not necessarily just these pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. So don't be scared to try this on other stuff. I would love to see pictures. If you are a member, you can add them in our Facebook group. I would love to see them. And we are going to add our little bow. I'm going to add this one onto the base just like we did the last one. Just going to add some hot glue onto the back here. Okay. And then I'm going to pop this on to the base of my pumpkin and I'm going to turn it around and give you guys the final reveal so you can see what we've created here. I love it. This bow turned out really good. I'm actually surprised because I was worried that that the two plaids were going to clash, but it looks very cute. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take this one off and then show you all on our little pedestal what we've came up with here. Cute. So pretty, right? Did it turn out good? Does it look good for you guys? Is it straight, Sadie? Okay. Love it. What do you all think? Make sure to leave a comment if you're going to recreate this or if you love it. If you have any questions, we would love to answer them. Um, I know there was like a lot of different elements here, but it's so fun. Don't forget that you can change the colors out. You can change the bows out to match whatever theme. I honestly think this would be really cute in all black. I like an all black Halloween vibe. So you could totally take this more Halloween and less fall if you wanted to. But y'all, these turned out so cute. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Um, like Tanner mentioned in the top of the show, we do have our dollar deal going on right now. So you all can join. If you're not a member already, you can join for a dollar. You're going to get a seven day trial. You can download 20 of our files to use. So you could even start today making this craft using our mystical font. So we would love to have you all as a part of our membership. Everyone's like saying gorgeous. Love it. Oh, Holly wants to do teal. Teal would be so pretty. Oh my gosh. I love that. Wonder what element we could use to make this a snowman for Christmas. 
I know. I'm like, what could you use? I'm trying to think. I don't know. If you figure out something, let me know. Also, if you all were in the master class last week, I'm still working on the printer. Um, <laughs> we broke the printer in our master class last week. And I have not figured out how to get the tissue paper to go through the inkjet printer. It worked fine for me the first time I did it. But I haven't forgotten about you all. So I was just going to let you know a little update. Um, but yes, so if you missed last week's master class, we did have a little kerfuffle. Um, but we figured it out. We made a really cute project. So make sure you watch that. If you all become members today, you're going to get access to all of those master classes. We have one a month. Um, so we have tons of exclusive content just for our members, like behind the dashboard, behind the membership. So hopefully you all get to check those out. I'm seeing lots of color options and things like that. Running to the dollar store now. Oh my gosh, so fun. Well, thank you all for hanging out with us today. And we will be back next Tuesday. And y'all, we're about to be going live a lot more often. So I think I'm allowed to tell you guys that. Um, we're going to be trying to go live two to three times a week rather than twice a week. So sometimes you may be getting a little bit more of us, especially as we get closer to Christmas. So very excited about that. We've got tons of Christmas crafts coming for y'all. I cannot wait. Um, hopefully you all are as excited as we are. And we will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.